What's going on everyone? It's getting to be crunch time. Not crunch time, crunch time, but like crunch wrap supreme. Anyway, what we've got here in front of us is a tube buggy, and this is being built for the We RC Rock Nationals, which is an event that's being held at the beginning of June in Morrison, Colorado. And the whole purpose of the event is to run fabricated tube style buggies. Metal buggies are highly highly suggested. You can run plastic cages like a Kappa or a Wraith if you wanted to, but it's not going to be a competitive thing because you are heavily penalized for not running metal. Now, I decided that I wanted to make my own chassis, and I did a video about this some weeks ago when I was kind of kicking off the idea of putting out these plans to a limited number of people so that they could build buggies alongside with me. And we're in the midst of that. The guys are making fantastic progress on it. And we're going to get to that at the end of the video. And I'll show you a bunch of their progress photos so far as well. But when you first saw this in that video, that wasn't really part of this series, but it was a precursor to it. It was just a bare chassis. And since then, I've obviously progressed to a full roller, as we would say. Now, I had said that I was building two in that video, and that is true. One was for me, one was for Matt, and I've already sent Matt his. I was gonna send him the first one, which was this one, and then build myself one second, but I didn't end up doing that. I ended up giving him the second one, which turned out pretty good. But what we have here is the moon buggy chassis that I drew up based on the Jimmy's 4x4 moon buggy chassis that they built here recently. And I've got it set up with F10 portal axles, front and rear. Now you can see that I've went with aluminum F10 portal housings and aluminum knuckles, and I've got steering axles on both ends, as you can see by the wheels not being straight. Now I don't have electronics in this, but I do have the BTA servo mounts on both axles already, as that's the steering setup that we'll be using. I'm looking forward to running the four wheel steer. Now I've done a ton of design on this buggy, Fabricating it in the first place was a very interesting but super fun process. If you didn't see before, basically I designed up the whole chassis in CAD and then make very carefully designed 3D printable fixtures so that you can fabricate it easily. And that is what I shared with all of the build along members so that they too could fabricate these buggies easily. From there, we got all of our send cut send parts and they've been added to the chassis as well, which will make it easy for us to bolt on panels, roof, the hood, and use a number of these other areas that I created mounting points on for whatever features I decide to add as we go. Now I designed up a hood. And I think I maybe had that in the first video. It's a very basic hood that was styled after the one that was on the full size. But since then there's been other progress as well. Obviously you'll see that I do have a dash in here and a driver. Now I've 3D printed the driver and he's molded into the seat as well. But the We Are Sea Rock rules, just they emphasize also using a driver that's at least six inches tall. Now I designed this one myself and he's about six and a half inches tall. So we've got that covered. I also decided to 3D scan my face using the Revo Point Pop 3 3D scanner. And then I grafted that onto what we've got here as a driver. Now it's common in We Rock for those guys to run just like BMX style helmets. So that's what I added to this. It's a separate part. It can be glued on, uh, but the top of my head isn't complete. And I guess since I always wear a hat, you don't know if that's not actually the case. But the driver position is also very closely designed around the entire design of the chassis. There's a cutout in the bottom part of the seat to help clear the shift linkage for the VFD twin that sits underneath. And the shift servos are sitting up here in the front area, just up by the feet of the driver. Now, because the drive, like I said, his feet are supposed to go up there and you want to have a complete figure. So when I was modeling the figure, I actually had to like rotate the knee up a little bit to clear the shift servo that will actuate the front dig. So I'm using the Reefs RC Raw 100 because I use a full size servo horn. And that was something that I thought would be a benefit to me. So I designed around those and I've got one laying down flat that will actuate the front dig and the other standing up to actuate the rear dig. And the uh, point or the reason that I had to change how they were mounted was for clearance of the drive shaft up front. Otherwise I probably would have stood them both up and I think that would have been more ideal, but 
just wasn't so much of an option. Now the transmission is sitting in there. And like I said, it's a VFD twin transmission. It's sitting in there with the front of the transmission facing the front of the vehicle, but the motor is gonna be back here behind the B pillar because in the rules of the WeRC Rock uh, organization, as you call it, you get bonus points if you have a rear mounted motor and you get more bonus points if you cover that motor with a fake scale engine. So we're gonna do both of those things, but that's not the orientation at all that this transmission is supposed to work. It's supposed to have transmission there and the motor in front of it. And I still have it pointed that way. So what I'm going to do is be modifying the case of the transmission to run the top shaft the other way to the back. And I'm actually gonna make a custom top shaft. We'll get into that in subsequent weeks. We're not there yet. We're gonna get there though, probably soon. The main progress other than actually just finishing the buggy and finishing mats was just getting it to be a roller. Now the links on this buggy are all Vanquish Titanium Builders links. Vanquish sells Titanium Builders links in two millimeter increments in packs of two as well and for a super affordable price. So I worked out what I thought that the wheelbase needed to be and how I wanted my caster angle to be both front and rear. And then I just built the links with the available sizes and it worked out perfectly couple of adjustments that I'm you know, looking to make for design as far as like the skid plate and things like that before I 100% finalize everything. But the builder's links are a huge asset and make it way easier than building your own links if that's just not something you want to do. To suspend the buggy, I decided to go with Pricey's Custom Shocks. Now, Pricey's Customs is out of Australia. So I worked with them, sent them a message, and he asked a bunch of questions on how the buggy was gonna be set up as far as unsprung weight, the length of the shocks that I needed and the amount of travel that I wanted in general. So ended up going with shocks that were a 70 millimeter compressed length and a 100 millimeter overall extended length, which a little bit longer than you may normally run, but you do lose a little bit of travel based on the internal and external spring style. But the buggy will sit at this ride height, which is not fully compressed. You still have about five millimeters of bump travel. So it still has a little bit of compliance downward, plus whatever you get out of the tires. But the rest of it then is all done with the actual internal springs. I went with this mostly because it most closely mimics what you would see on full size buggies that typically run like an air style suspension. So that I think looks the best. I'm also told that these perform pretty well. I've built with them before, but I haven't ran them personally. So that's what we're going to do with this one. Now, being that this is a build along, I'm still trying to design and produce as many parts as I can to get this finished. And everyone else is just waiting on me unless they're still building their cage. But I have been trying to crank out as much design as I can. These type of buggies, it's very common for them to run Chevy Ecotech engines. Those were found in all kinds of things, Chevy Cobalts and Cadillacs and just all the cars, you know how GM goes. So I am designing up a scale engine that is based on the Ecotech. I'm kind of working top down. I've got the valve cover basically designed up um, and you'll see some CAD images of that, but I've got the coil packs on there, the you know general shape, things like that. I also worked on the exhaust side because these engines that are typically used in here are turbo engines. Now I put a much larger turbo on it than it really needs to be. It's actually the turbo from the Porsche class one build, same size. I did have to convert it to a four cylinder header or exhaust manifold. Um, but other than that, same, same exact turbo, just rotated, adjusted a few little things here and there. And I'm looking forward to getting the whole engine finished because it's going to sit back here in the back of the car, obviously. Uh, but it's not, doesn't fit in there right now because the motor size that I'm designing around, this one is larger. This is an HK hobbies, uh, revolver rock crawler motor, whatever they call it. Uh, but I'm going to be running a Holmes hobbies motor. And so it'll be a little bit shorter. Therefore I've got a little bit more room. So I didn't make the proper accommodations for that yet. So much to do, so little time. I'm gonna spend a lot more time on the motor. I enjoy that part of it. We're gonna get it as close as we can and we're gonna cover up the revolver motor that we will be using entirely, both with this motor and probably some other details like a little fuel cell. Then we'll also have room in the back for a radiator. Of course, the actual, the, the exhaust pipe clearance that's gonna come out back here and who knows what else, some other 
few things, I'm sure. But we have to stuff a battery in this thing somewhere. And I think that right up here under the hood is where that's going to live. I'm going to try and design it around an 850 milliamp 3S pack, uh, which is this size right here. And I think that we can make that fit without much trouble. I talked about that a little bit uh, in the first video, but we're going to get there. It'll fit. Lots of plans, lots of details. We'll all get there. We'll all get there together. I have high hopes and uh, crunch time, so <laughs> things are going to have to happen. One thing about this is that the end weight of this vehicle, RTR, for the event has to be a minimum of seven pounds. Currently, how this truck sits right now it is 4.95 pounds. Now, it's very incomplete. I don't have the steering servos in there, panels, ESC, BEC, battery, uh, the scale engine, any details, none of that is in there. But two pounds is still a good amount to get to. So I'm gonna get the truck done first, built with all of those things, and then see where our weight is at before I add weight, like either brass portal covers up front or any weight like clamp rings inside of the wheels. You do have to run a licensed tire as well, which is kind of cool. Uh, has to be licensed scale. And currently I've got the Vanquish Yokohama Geolanders on here, 4.75 inches tall and available in the same red compound as tires like the VXT2 and the Falcon Wild Peaks. I like the size of these. I like the style. They're aggressive. And I think that they're going to be a perfect fit for this buggy. This is going to be run in the 1.9 unlimited class. So that just means 1.9 wheels. You can run any size tire that you want in that class. So if you wanted to run a 5.4 inch 1.9, you'd be fully allowed to if that was what you were after. I think that this size tire with the 13 and a half inch wheelbase that I designed this around is going to be a good fit. I think this is going to perform how I want, or at least how I, you know, think that it should <laughs> for what I'm expecting of it. And yeah, it's, it's just going to be a fun, super cool buggy. I do have some plans for the livery on this and we'll get into those details later, but I'm thinking of going with a YMH theme, which means I might do a forged denim hood. A ton of work has gone into this already. I didn't necessarily document all of it. I did put up a lot of Instagram reels showing some of like the welding process or the parts in fixtures during the process, all of that. But I didn't really go crazy into it because I was, I was trying to also just get it done. I did order more parts from Send Cut Send to make another one of these. And I think I'm going to try and do some sort of long form video going way too far in depth of the entire process of fabricating this, like a three hour video, <laughs> something ridiculous. But I feel like why not? I think that that could just be overly fun. And for a handful of people, maybe they'll enjoy sitting there and just listening and grinding away as it goes. But before we end this video, my plan is to show you the progress that a bunch of the other guys in the build along have made so far. Some of them have just been cranking along. Some are just going to like slowly get there, you know, as life allows, put in the time to make the whole thing work. I love building unique vehicles, but I think that it's going to be just as awesome to see 60 unique vehicles that are just like mine being built at the same time. I get, I, that's as much fun or actually way more <laughs> than just doing it by myself. So hopefully you guys enjoy some of the progress photos. Give those guys a round of applause for all the work and how good of a job that they've done as well. But if you enjoy this video and you're looking forward to more of them, hit the like button and subscribe, turn the notification bell on so you see the videos as soon as they get uploaded. We're gonna be doing this series every Thursday until the event. And if you'd like more information on the event, I'll put a link to it below. And if you'd like to see more behind the scenes of this build and what's going on before the event, you can join the channel membership as well posting up some videos just throughout the day behind, you know, staring at, looking at the details of this. So, and then of course, just whatever else is going on at the time as well. So appreciate all of you channel members, but now let's jump into the rest of the buggies.